Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. So it's the end of September wrap up. How have I got on with my European month? The pens that I started with. We've got the Mr. Pen, the Parsons Essential with Diamine Brandy Snap. The Pelican M205 with Diamine One More Sleep. The Leonardo Ferrari with Diamine Serenity. A Diplomat Aero. Let's move up so you can see it with Diamine Ash. A Tabaldi Benonia with Diamine Yuletide. And the Waterman Karen with Diamine Cardinal. So how did I get on with these pens? How do I rank them? Let's jump in at position number six. I will be very honest, this was a very, very hard month to pick. It took me about two hours to come up with a ranking. Now, normally I do it within about 15 minutes. This is how close all of them were. So I was really having to scratch my head with this one. Position number six, I decided to give to the Mr. Pen, the Parsons Essential. It's a nice pen, isn't it? Very classic looking. It's a cartridge converter. And we have not a lot of ink left in this one. A number of the pens are virtually empty. It's a medium oblique cursive nib. Reason why I decided to put the number six is I find when I'm writing the nib feels scratchy, but then I have to remember to rotate the pen so the nib is properly oriented. That's the only reason I've marked it down. <laughs> That's how close these pens were. It puts down a lovely line when I've got it in the right direction. As you can see here, we've got a lovely natural line variation. Quite a very nice color as well. So for this month, I've decided that gets position number six. Position five. Let me just move this up before we go on to the next ones. Let's get rid of that top one. I think that should give us a little bit of all the rest of the pens. There we go. We can only just see the one at the bottom. Position number five. Again, very hard decision. Number five, going to the Diplomat Aero. It's a nice pen. It is. It looks a bit plain. I know that. I understood that when I bought it. This is the factory finish. It's just the plain aluminium. This is how picky I'm being. Got a lot of squeaking when I take the body off. Cartridge converter. Another one to be cleaned out. Main reason I'm at this down is the section. The section to me does feel a little bit on the thin side. It's also quite slippy. So I do find that my fingers tend to slip down. Because I hold my pens at the bottom, there's not a long way for them to slip. And there is at least this nice little ridge. It's comfortable enough in the hand. Sort of posts, but I don't post it. I find it's, it's nice enough unposted. I've really enjoyed the ink, this Diamine Ash. You know, it's a grey ink, but I still found it quite enjoyable. And when I'm writing with it, it goes down with a little bit of a green tinge. But as it dries, that green tinge quickly goes away. I do think that ink, though, is a really good match for that factory finish. But again, I'm ranking. So, position number five. So that's a Diplomat Aero. At position number four, this one goes to the Pelican M205. This is blue marble. Piston filling pen. You can't see through this piston window. It's useless. One of the reasons why I mark it down, I've got no idea what my ink level is. It's a fairly small pen. It's just about usable unposted. But when I post it, really nice, enjoyable. The nib, oh, this is a beautiful nib to write with. It's a steel nib, absolutely gorgeous. So it puts down a beautiful, awesome line and gives you really nice tactile feedback. The ink, Diamine One More Sleep. I really like this ink. When I put it in at the start of the month, I've got to be honest, it was more a case of I want to use up that ink vent bottle. But wow, I really like the colour of this. It's a nice, I would say it's a blue, but tending towards grey, only a little bit. It's got some nice shading coming through. It looks really nice to write with. And the whole combination really does feel nice. But as I've already said, we're ranking. So we put this in at position number four. So that's that Pelican M205. Just move the page up. There we go. So now we've got three pens left. 
We've got the Leonardo Ferrari, we've got the Tobaldi Benonia and the Waterman Corinne. Which one comes in at position number three? Lots of hard thought went into this one. I'm going to give it to the Leonardo Ferrari. Beautiful pen, this white salt, absolutely gorgeous. Italian made pen. It's a captured converter. It takes loads of ink. There's still loads of ink left in this, so I'll be writing with this for a while longer. Very nice in the hand, really comfortable to use. I enjoy writing with this pen. It does post if you want it to. Again, I don't, but it's there. Number six nib, and it's a 1.1 nib. And it's that nib, which is why I'm marking it down. I love the line it gives it. We've got this beautiful natural line variation with it being a stub nib. But why I'm marking it down is I find that the edges are just a little bit on the sharp side. So what they do is when I'm writing, they occasionally catch on the paper. That is purely the only reason I've marked it down as number three. All the pens this month could have very easily been number one. But I have to try and differentiate, so I'm afraid that's the reason for it. I am slowly working on it with Micromesh, smoothing the edges, but I like to do it a little bit at a time. The whole reason for that is I want to make a little change, write with it for a few days to see if it's made any difference before I make another adjustment. Reason for this, I don't want to go too far and spoil the stub nature. So this comes in at position number three. So that's the Leonardo Ferrari. Just move this up again. The bottom two pens, they're the two contenders. Which one do you think will come in at position number one? At position two, I've decided to give that one to the Tobaldi Benonia. Absolutely stunning looking pen. This Bora Bora pattern, very, very nice. The shape of the pen. So we've got a slight convex nature here. Looks very, very nice. Really enjoyable. I say this beautiful material. It's a cartridge converter. There we go. Again, virtually out of ink. Most of these pens will be getting cleaned out later on today. Section, still following on through that colour. The section, nice and comfy. I hold my pens down low, as I've already said. My fingers just fit there perfectly. If you hold your fingers up a bit further, you may find that they're catching on these threads but how i hold it beautiful the nib wow it's a stunner really nice it's a number six nib puts down a beautiful line beautiful to write with nearly as good as the nib in that pelican m205 very very nice to write with so it's nice fit in the hand why am i marking it down as number two because everything i'm saying about it is absolutely stunning and it is why I'm marking it down at number two is here, where I'm th putting the cap on. Feels like it's catching when I take it on and off. Now, the more I use this, the freer it gets. But it just feels as if the threads are slightly misaligned. And that's how picky I'm being. That's why I'm marking it down. So at position number two, I'm giving that to that Tobaldi Benonia. And that leaves a winning pen has been the Waterman Karen. There we go. Beautiful, stunning pen, this marine amber. A beauty to behold. It's a cartridge converter. Still got plenty of ink left in this, so this will keep going for a while. The section, this, this black plastic and it's an embedded nib. The nib, 18 karat gold. Beautiful to write with. In the hand, it's a nice fit. My fingers just sit there nicely on that section. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is the pen that I've decided will win for this month. So that gets position number one. Let's swap over and we'll take a look at the additional pen that I brought in. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos, and then 
as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. So the additional pen this month is only the one. It's a Lamy 2000. Two of the other pens had run out of ink, so that's why I brought this in. It's a piston filling pen. Got a nice classic shape. I mean, it's been around since the 60s. Very good workmanship. You can hardly see there the join between the piston cap and the body. We've got a little ink window. I do wish the ink window was a bit bigger. I do find that I struggle to see that. We've got these little nibs here. Oh, nibs, nubs really. When you put the cap on, they click into place and they hold that cap on. Then you pull it off. Got the silver coloured section. Oh, we've got this gorgeous 14 karat gold nib. This is a broad nib, but it writes more like a stub. It's really comfortable in the hand. I'll just, just show you here about the, the stub nature. That's going down. That's going across. So we do have a little bit of natural line variation in there as well. The pen, about 316 Aussie dollars. So not cheap, but not overly expensive. The ink, Die Mine Weeping Willow. I'm still in two minds about that. I quite like the colour. I like the way it shades. I just wonder if it's a bit too pale for me. That's the only thing which really puts me off this ink. Other than that, I think it's beautiful. So that's the Lamy 2000. Let's swap over and we'll take one final look at the pens I've been using this month. So here we've got this month's pen wrap. The pens I was using, position number six, the Mr. Pen, the Parsons Essential. Number five, the Diplomat Aero. Number four, the Pelican M205. Number three, Leonardo Ferrari. Number two, the Itabaldi Benonia. The winning pen, the Waterman Karen. And my extra pen, the Lamy 2000. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts on these pens? How would you rank them? Would you have ranked them any differently? What criteria would have you used to rank them? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kick start the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.